What's up everybody? Your favorite Seth Ferrosi back with another whiteboard edition. This time we're doing chest. Everybody loved the first edition which was shoulders. This one here with chest. This whiteboard situation and everything that I do, I absolutely love educating you all in layman's terms and how my brain works because I'm not going to overcomplicate anything. I'm going to be upfront and real. And with this chest, for me personally, I remember in the beginning whenever I first started lifting weights. I used to be the insecure fat kid growing up. I didn't like the way clothes fit. I didn't like the way I felt whenever I was 12, 13 years old and I said I wanted to change, but I'll never forget looking at myself in a t-shirt and how it fit, how it fit my chest, how it fit my shoulders, how I looked, and then whenever I took off my shirt, what I looked like and what I was secure about because as, you know, as a man, as just anybody in general, you're going to be worried about your appearance. You want to look good. You want to feel sexy. You want other people to fuck you. That's pretty much how it is. At least get jerked off when you're 13. Now, here's the gig. Like I said, whenever I look at myself, the biggest thing with me and everything that I do is whenever it comes to your physique, you can't fucking lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Stop the video, go look at yourself in the mirror and say, what is good on my chest? What sucks about it? What, what, what could I wish was different? Understand your genetics, understand your capabilities and understand where you want to go. Because if you don't have a goal, fuck you doing? You're just pissing into the wind. You can't do that. The, the vision that I always wanted was that squared off chest, like I was saying. But then I wanted a big upper chest. I wanted to look like my chest could choke, it, choke myself or have a shelf. So that's what I wanted to attain and I have to work with my genetics. Or is it like, you know, from the side, the typical fucking, look at the shelf on this thing, right there, huge. Or do you have a flat chest? Or are you the type of person that has no chest and a belly? And then it's like, okay, so any one of these guys, this guy or this guy, if you're like, all I have to do is make my chest bigger than my belly so whenever I wear a t-shirt, you can't see my belly because my chest is so big. So we have to get this thing to be bigger than that so when you wear a t-shirt, it hands over. That right there is like what everybody's like, oh, so it's the holidays. I'm allowed to eat shitty food as long as my chest and everything else grows and my stomach's flat, I'm good. Not flat, it looks flat in a t-shirt. That's the part where you can't lie to yourself. You have to understand the situation that you're in. Next on top of that would be from the front. Like I said, when I wear my t-shirt, what do I want to look like? I wanted the square chest. I don't have that. I don't have the perfectly square chest. I have the fucking tit. I have good genetics from a chest standpoint, but it does not square. I don't look sexy with the shirt off. I think I do, but some people might not. But my chest had this droop. And it's not that that's what it looked like, but that's what it looks like in a t-shirt. My thing is my chest, I have this crazy thick outer sweep on my chest, but that's just what I look like. There's nothing I can do about it. That's the genetics I was given. This doesn't occur. A crazy square chest is not how it is. I have a hanging chest. This right here on people is a problem area. That's a problem area for two reasons. Either this is where you are crazy flat and have no muscle tone, and you have too much fat here. A lot of people will end up having dominant shoulders, overpowering shoulders, and then they'll have a weak chest. So what will happen is, is whenever they take their shirt off or whenever they're looking at themselves, they have great shoulders, they have good triceps, but right here, they're lacking. They end up holding fat right there. It can always pinch fat and there's never this hanging muscle. The big question I get from people is how do I get the, the, the thickness on the outside of my chest? How do you gain the thickness right there? Well, this is bodybuilding and we're building the physique. This right here, to build mass right here, you need to take the stress away from right here. If you have dominant shoulders, a lot of people have good structure when they stand there, but they're like, man, my chest just doesn't thicken up right here. Similar to Bob's situation. Bob, that's been his big thing is, stupid strong shoulders, can press a lot, can move a lot of weight, but cannot get this portion to activate. So that's a look from the front, or just in general taking their shirt off and displaying their physique. They're like, I know this sucks. Even though we like, uh, we, we like to think that we don't have insecurities, we all have them. And this is the time to be honest with yourself about them so that you can better yourself. The next biggest problem people have is upper chest. People end up liking to do flat bench, they like to do flies. Incline is always more difficult. In my opinion, you cannot do enough incline. Incline and outer chest, this portion right here is always my goal when I'm training. Upper and outer. This being a problem area for people or for a way to have a dominant look 
would be to do a shitload of upper chest work. What kind of upper chest work? What exercises? We'll get to that in a second. Because if you're this guy here, the best place to start is building the shelf up top so you can start to gain that so whenever you wear a t-shirt and you stand from the side, you start to get the, the shelf look going. That way, whenever you wear the t-shirt, you feel a little bit more, you feel better about yourself. You have a, a dominant look. Next after that would end up continuing to build so that you have the square right here, this outer portion of your chest, that thickness. So whenever you stand from the side, you have a thick look. You look like a brick shit house. That's the goal with this. Because again, with each and every body part that you do, shoulders, chest, back, legs, arms, you have to focus on that particular body part right then and there to achieve it. Do that one that day and move on to the next. So with all that being said, that's great. Now we know you cannot fucking lie to yourself. Whatever is in your head is working. Whatever you're thinking that you want to look like, it is possible to achieve it. You just have to put in a certain amount of work. And then you have to figure out what type of work do I have to do? That's where this comes in and me being open with my own insecurities and how I look and then how do we do it what exercises what type of training we're gonna go through the workouts of exactly how to achieve this for different parts whoa that's pretty great all right so we have two different workouts here we have outer chest focus and then upper chest focus now within this you have to understand people might say or beginners are like oh you have to do full range repetitions all right here's the gig there are ways to manipulate your workout from a rep range from a set range standpoint from an intensity standpoint with how many sets how you do them the distance of your repetition whether you're doing half reps three quarter reps full reps there is a number of different ways this is bodybuilding if it was as simple as just doing full repetitions straight sets with no added style or techniques or any intensity, and you were just like, yeah. Everyone would look the fucking same. That's not real. Your physique is not the same as mine, is not the same as Bob's, is not the same as Shane's, is not the same as Mr. Fucking Olympia. Everyone has to find what works for them. Some people have better genetic gifts than others. I could do fucking push-ups and my chest will grow. But in order to be an upper echelon pro, you have to find ways to manipulate it because you're competing against other people like that. And be open to trying anything. No matter what you do, fucking workouts, nutritional program, everything, don't half-ass it. Whole ass that motherfucker. Understand with this, we're gonna go through a couple different things here and explain why this is so important and how to add intensity and focus on these certain things. For me, the warm-up is so important for me. The warm-up is vital. You have to do a solid warm-up, especially for people that have dominant shoulders and have trouble activating their pecs. If you have trouble activating your chest and you're like, man, I get a pump in my shoulders and triceps, but I don't get a pump in my chest right away. It usually happens like halfway through my workout and you're like, it just, it's not firing. You didn't warm up properly. Your more dominant body parts are going to take over than the lagging body parts or the, the, the not so dominant. If your shoulders are stronger than your chest and you start bench pressing, shoulders are gonna do a lot of the work. Are you hitting some chest? Yeah, but we're not 100% focused on it. We're not fucking optimizing. You have to optimize. Otherwise, you're gonna to continue to do what you're doing and you're not going to progress. That's fucking insanity. To do the same thing over and over and expect a different fucking result, it's not working. So, we need to warm up. We need your chest to be firing. We need your blood to be flowing. We need everything to be occurring at a high level in order to fuck all this shit up. You need to be on this and sweating and into it and feel your chest. You want to be able to feel it contract and move and be like, ah, oh, there it is. Whenever you're doing all your exercises. Otherwise, what the fuck is the point of doing them? You can't do, you don't want to do shoulders. Can't keep doing the same shit over and over. So, with the warm up, I want you to stretch out, get warmed up, warm your shoulders up, you know, do all your basic stuff. I want you to start five sets of 20 on push ups on a bench. This isn't going to work. I need something else. Fill me on the ground, Shane. We're here, full repetitions, nice and slow, but I want you to focus on feeling your chest. Even if you gotta do a couple pumps, some half reps, a couple halves and a full. The goal here is to emphasize your chest. This is what I do, this is a little excessive. I do five sets on a bench or the Smith machine, which is about waist height, and just do that so I can start to feel it. I'll manipulate my shoulder angles so I feel it in different parts of my chest. And then I do two sets of 25 push-ups on the floor. Right there, we got 150 push-ups to start. Then, this one right here, if you are shoulder dominant and your chest, you have trouble getting your chest to fire, three sets of 10 to 15 with the cable crossovers, or do the pack deck. The whole reason is 
I want to take your shoulders out of the equation as much as possible and put tension on your chest. I want more blood to flow. If that means you have to lower a little bit of the weight in here, this is like a pre-exhaust, but it's not, it's your fucking warm up. Put all the food that you're eating to work. This right here will be a game changer for you if your shoulders are more dominant than your chest. We want to get it to activate. You need to feel your chest move. You need to feel everything on there in order for all of this to work. All right, so now we're gonna work into, we're gonna start here. We got outer chest workout, upper chest workout. Both of these workouts are in the bio and after this, we're gonna demonstrate some of these exercises out in the gym, the ones that people have questions about, as well as a couple of the uh, training styles or the techniques that I like to do to add some intensity. Outer chest workout. We're going to focus on your outer chest, this swoop, this hang. We're obviously gonna hit overall chest with everything, but this is your focus. And again, if this is your focus right here, it's probably because you don't have enough muscle mass and this is a spot where just fat kind of accumulates. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, fuck, dude. You just get disgusted and it makes you feel insecure. So you need to add muscle to this area in order for it to look less like shit. You can't turn fat into muscle. You have to add muscle and then fat will disappear over time. It's just a, more of a body transformation. All right, so now we're working into the workouts. We have starting with the outer chest workout. Me personally, with always, with every single bodybuilder type of workout, some type of incline, incline, incline. Incline barbell is the most basic compound movement you can do. Some people say flat bench, I'm not big on heavy flat bench. This right here, incline barbell, mass building exercise. Within here, go into the workout, check out the sets, reps, and I'll do some descriptive ways of doing it and add an intensity. Out of the gate, right here. That's our focus, your upper chest. We want that fucking shelf, okay? Whenever we do it, I'll explain some of the techniques on how to make sure you're in a good position out there. Next, flat dumbbell flies. Right here is where we're working. I want this right here. That is the portion of this that we are gonna work on so that you fucking feel it. Whenever we're here, you're gonna hug a tree, but when you come down, you are only gonna come up three quarters of the way, okay? Three quarters of the way for a couple reps, and then a full repetition. That's what I call a trifecta. I know, I can't think of good names. You're gonna do two three quarter reps, one, two, and then a full rep. The whole reason is, is I wanna keep as much stress on the outer portion of your chest as possible. That's where I want all the stress to go. So now we have the upper chest, the outer chest portion hit from these two. Next, we're gonna do dumbbell pullovers, supersetted with dips on the parallel bars. Like this, not from behind the back, but on the parallel bars. So we're gonna do dumbbell pullovers, superset with dips. Again, on the dips, I'm going to focus on only going up. I'm not going to completely lock out on the exercise. If I lock out, too much stress is put on my triceps, and then I feel it too much in my front delts. I wanna to go to like seven eighths, three quarters to seven eighths of the way up, and it's hanging that, because when I do so, this is my target area. I want this, I wanna feel that the whole time. The dumbbell pullovers, you're stretching out and up, and I'll explain it in there. But again, we're gonna stretch all your shit out. The whole goal here is rib cage exercise. Along with your rib cage, whenever you pull over, I want you to pull, you'll pull, you'll see it in there, pull with the lower portion of your chest. Keep tension on this portion here. And then we're gonna superset it with the dips. So you're gonna do all your pullovers, and then go in there and pump them out, and you'll feel the hand, you'll feel the stretch, you'll feel yourself open up more blood flow, more airflow, more big old side titties. At this point, your ass is gonna be kicked. You're gonna, this is when it comes to making sure that you're hydrated, you're fueled, you ate all your food, all that happy shit because we're gonna work into a flat bench barbell, your fourth exercise. I'm not a big fan of flat bench. However, when it comes to building a better outer chest, fucking right, two words, not Heavy, not heavy. You can either do it on flat bench barbell or on the Smith machine, or if you have a flat bench machine at your gym with this, I like to use this technique again. One, two, three. One, two, three. We're pushing blood into that portion of our chest. And I'll go in there with some hand manipulation on how you can make sure that you feel it. Because if we stay over top with our elbows up and out, you're gonna feel it more in your chest and more in your shoulders than you do your chest. Keep your elbows down and not quite kinked in like this for a tricep push, but if you keep them in between the two, for lack of better phrases, you'll feel it a little bit more. We don't wanna be all the way up and just hit our front delts. After that, pec decks or cable crossovers. This is just a finisher. 
you might only do two or three sets. You can use the trifectas again, something like it, or a different type of uh, style or technique that I'll put in the workouts here. With these again, focus the fly motion. With this, make sure you're nice and tight. Make sure your elbows are in a good position. Make sure you're not flopping around. And what happens is as you begin to fatigue and beat the shit out of your chest, I don't want the other body parts on you taking over and doing all the work. At that point, again, it'll become pointless. So as you work through this, I want you to make sure you feel everything that you're doing. All right, so the upper chest workout. This one here, my goal is the upper portion and there'll be some outer mixed into there, obviously. But this is our focus. And if you're sitting there saying, what do I do? I need both. Do both workouts for a couple weeks. Do outer for a couple weeks, do upper for a couple weeks, and see how it works, see how you feel, manipulate a couple things, see what works for you. That's the most important thing. But if you're gonna do it, don't fucking half-ass it, go all in. Incline dumbbell presses. This is my favorite chest exercise to fucking day. Simply because I can have this manipulation from all the way on the inside of the upper chest, and then outside portion. This is, again, my focus. Whenever you have, and again, you can manipulate the repetition distance. Whenever I come all the way up and I squeeze them together, I can feel that upper portion. Rather than if I'm all the way out with a barbell, I don't get the same movement. Things change, manipulate, see how you feel best. Next, upper chest is incline dumbbell flies. Again, you can adjust the height of your, of your uh, bench and see what portion you like. The only way to figure out how something hits the way you want it to is to experiment with it. Me personally, I'll start with this at like a 37 degree angle. I'll drop this down, so I'll be at 37 degree angle on this one. I'll drop this down so it's a 30 degree angle and it's a little bit lower. And at that point, it takes less stress off of here and adds it onto the outside of my chest because I do big swooping exercises. And again, we'll demonstrate that in there. Third exercise is the pec deck. With this exercise, I'm gonna focus on the outer portion whenever I'm here and whenever I engage, my force production area being right here, engage, and then I'm gonna to come together and squeeze the fuck out of my chest all the way in. So it's gonna hit all the fibers. So it's like, you wanna have that strided look, you just wanna hit everything all the way across, and I'm gonna squeeze the shit out of my inner chest. I'm gonna work the outer, the inner, pretty much the whole thing, but this is gonna be my focus on the way out so I can squeeze on the end. Everything I'm doing within these workouts all have a purpose. As I'm doing everything that I'm doing, I'm seeing it happen. I have a visual for what I want it to achieve because that's what you're actually fucking doing. If you aren't seeing it or feeling it, if you're not feeling it or seeing it and vice versa, it ain't gonna fucking happen. Because as I built myself over the years, this was all I was envisioning for years on end. Every single workout, everything I was doing, this was it. I move into an incline machine press or incline Smith machine press. I'm going back to incline, so that's one, two, three. Three exercises for incline. You can't do enough. If you could do four or five, fuck it, do four or five incline as well. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be too much. It's like getting too many blowjobs. You can never get enough blowjobs from the same woman if you're married. Don't go, don't go different. But on an incline machine press or an incline Smith machine press, again, this is where you're gonna be able to add the intensity or a different type of technique to your workout and add something to it. After this, to finish off and smoke yourself at the end, I like to do dumbbell pullovers. It opens up your rib cage. Big deep breaths, nice pulls, nice stretch. Allow some blood flow. You're stretching the shit out of your chest. You're opening up your rib cage. Give you that big dominant look whenever you're doing your poses. Whenever you're walking around, you'll be able to feel it more. That's at least what goes on in my head. And we're gonna superset it with push-ups via the floor or a bench or the Smith machine. I prefer the Smith machine. I saw a video John Meadows did a long time ago and he called them ladder push-ups. He just did them where it was like a drop set and you'd start high on the Smith machine and do so many push-ups, do 10, and then drop it down a rung, do 10 more, drop it down a rung, do 10 more, and then climb back up. This is a great place to do that because you're gonna be able to smoke the other portions of your chest. You'll be able to see whenever you start up high where it's hitting your chest, and as you, inch, as you go down in each rung, you'll be able to figure out which portions of the chest that you're hitting more within each rung. So that way, I'll do my dumbbell pullovers and I'll superset it with this. Because again, the goal here is to make things very hard. If it's too hard, suck it up. Stop being a pussy. Go do it. This is how my head works. Every single workout that I do, I have a reason for the exercise that I'm doing. I have a reason that I'm doing the trifectas, the three-quarter reps or the half reps. 
There's a reason for it all because I'm focusing. This is bodybuilding. This is not powerlifting. This is not strong man. This is bodybuilding. We are strictly going on how you look. Because if we had just had to do four repetitions, it'd be too easy. Everybody has things that are more dominant than others. Everybody was given a certain set of genetics. Everybody was given a certain look. It's your job to work with them and then have to work against them to attain the look that you want. Me, I'm a fat, wide-waisted white guy. I eat milkshakes, my ass jiggles. Just how it works. So I have to work with that in my diet. I have to make sure I do my cardio within my chest. I remember, I remember looking at guys with the fucking perfectly square chests and just being like, man, it's awesome. I put on a white fucking t-shirt, my chest, my chest just hangs that way. I don't like the way I look in them. That's why I don't wear a lot of white t-shirts. Even though I'm pretty fucking handsome, pretty sexy when I take my shirt off. It's just how I feel. So those are things that we have to work with whenever we're building our workouts to build our self-confidence, to build our mentalities. And also, like I said, we can't lie to ourselves in every single thing that you do, whether it's arms, legs, chest, shoulders, each exercise has to be done with a purpose. Don't forget that. Don't just go in to do something. Don't half-ass it. Whole-ass that motherfucker.